In this video, I'm going to capture social design principles for building with nature. These principles derive from my experience in working in a transdisciplinary fashion with engineers, ecologists, planners, public authorities and local residents to promote ecosystem-based water and coastal management on three continents in Africa, Europe and North America. I've adopted a complex systems perspective from the outset. Complex systems are characterized by nonlinear processes, feedbacks, the influence of scale, time and space. Small changes can induce large effects and vice versa. Many system components and interactions and they can exhibit emergent behavior. Most importantly, Context and history matter. They are adaptive and change starts from within. They give rise to wicked or messy problems. These types of problems can also be called unstructured or multi-actor system problems. In my career, I've been privileged to work with pioneers in stakeholder engagement and multidisciplinary environmental science, as well as eminent hydraulic engineers. Consider Professor Tally Palmer, who shared her insights on principles for transdisciplinary engagement processes. She has applied these in South Africa with remarkable and ongoing success. Consider also the experiences of Jacobina Ritzema and Abel Knipping. They undertake environmental and social impact assessment for infrastructural development all over the world. They've shared with you the eight principles that they use in determining, together with local people, the substantive social changes that will occur as a result of infrastructure development. Consider also Emeritus Professor Tido Fellinger, who has shared his stakeholder inclusive approach to port development with you. He recognizes the importance of taking people's values into account at the very beginning of an infrastructure design process. I will be sharing with you the additional social design principles that have been tested together with a team of scientists from the Netherlands and Ghana in a Sustainable Ports in Africa project. You have encountered or will encounter some of these scientists. Professor Kwasi Apining Addo and Dr. Edem Mahu on the Ghana case study and Dr. Helene Froegtenhill on the issue of scales and innovation along the ASIL Rufier. So we can distinguish three kinds of social design principles. One, the principles that deal with the substantive content of the social environment, the fabric or local social context of the infrastructure development. Two, the principles that deal with the stakeholder engagement process. And three, the normative principles matching with the building with nature concept. We will begin by distilling the normative social design principles. These derive from a systems approach, a complexity informed stance that acknowledges intrinsic uncertainties in dealing with multiple stakeholders in a dynamic wetland environment. We embrace the notion of multiple perspectives and partial solutions along an ever evolving development path. For a particular locality, with its local stakeholders, a building with nature infrastructure design becomes a place-based intervention. See De Boer et al. in 2019 for additional insight on this. This means that the normative social design principles include adopt a complexity-informed stance, a complex multi-actor systems view, recognizing both the multi-actor complexity and dynamic natural systems complexity as well as their interactions and feedbacks at many scales. Adopt a stakeholder inclusive approach, acknowledging diverse knowledge sources from disciplinary knowledge, public administrative knowledge to the lived experiences of people. Adopt a value-based approach to infrastructure design, recognizing value differences from the outset. Realize that uncertainty is inherent and adopt an adaptive approach. 
and recognizing that the building with nature concept is ecosystem based and that infrastructure development has a place based effect on both the natural and social environments, engage in co-creation, co-learning and co-design to build coalitions for nature friendly design. These five principles set the scene, determining the framework within a which a respectful and collaborative process of engaging with the people concerned with infrastructure development in a particular ecological and social environment can be given form. Because of the place-based nature and long lifetimes of building with nature infrastructures, let's move on to consider the principles of such an engagement process. Clearly, this needs to take the form of transdisciplinary engagement. After all, there are diverse knowledge sources, different values, complex and dynamic social and ecological systems that will require adaptive decision-making in the future. The social design principles for transdisciplinary engagement include tolerate discomfort and unresolved tensions. They are often a gateway to a new level of knowledge, understanding and trust. Be sensitive to aha moments of insights. Engage with balanced generosity, inquiring, listening and sharing. Managing contribution and constraint is closely linked to listening. Practice tolerance, build integrity and mutual trust. Create and use reflective opportunities. Be sensitive, be sensitive to the arrivals of both people and ideas. Manage discontinuities. People come and go and arrangements change suddenly. Sustain inquiry. Keep going when it is tough. And be conscious that everyone involved is a whole, multi-dimensional person with the potential to engage with their whole self and with many ways of knowing. It's evident that these principles don't tell you what to do, but they guide you in how to engage with a wide range of stakeholders, productively and sincerely over time. I've conducted many co-design workshops or activities with such overarching transdisciplinary engagement processes. There's more than one way to do this successfully, but in all cases, it is important to ensure that people and their knowledge and values are treated respectfully, and that creative designs are sought that take the complexity of the social and natural environments into account. We know from McAvoy 2019 that such workshop activities can have positive learning effects on the overarching engagement process up to one and a half years later. Finally, we come to the substantive social design principles. Here we'll use the eight Vecla et al. principles, elaborated for the local social context. They are way of life, culture, community, political system, environment, health and well-being, personal and property rights, and fears and aspirations. We add another substantive social design principle to accommodate the issue of scale and to take account of cumulative effects or opportunities that extend beyond the local context. So the ninth principle is identify cumulative effects and opportunities. This completes the distillation of the social design principles for building with nature. I'm quite aware that these principles are not complete, nor necessarily universal. They derive from co-design, co-creation and co-learning activities in countries with Western democracies, although there were often very high power differences between stakeholders. I encourage you to apply and test these principles in your Building with Nature practice to establish their degree of applicability more widely.